uh, the comment so that you can download it, scribble notes in it, um, kind of have ideas while you research it. Because I really hope after this that you go and, you know, Google it. There's tons of websites out there with all different kinds of information. It can get kind of complicated. So I'm giving you this just to keep it basic. Um, but um, to make you aware that having um, an eco-friendly garden that is in balance between um, beneficial um, insects and plants and predators and, and all this stuff um, can really work well together and it doesn't really have to be that complicated. So like I was saying, um, the first one is protection. If you plant uh, like larger crops together like um, say big cabbages and you can interplant um, other things that are tender more tender in between like your um, lettuces and spinach and the big spreading leaves of the cabbages um, can protect them more from the heat from wind um, if you need to th throw a big floating row cover on maybe it gets really cold at night cabbages are okay with it but you know maybe your lettuces are a little bit more tender um, it can work as a protection in an easy way without having to set up an entire hoop house for a day if your weather goes bad, that sort of thing. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, you can let me know if it does. Um, number two is insect trapping. Hey, Marianne. Um, and it's not, it's not what you think, um, but it's plants that act um, like as a trap maybe for um, insects that you don't want in your garden. So... Um, for example, like in the PDF I put in the th an, an example, my father-in-law for years, he has planted dill in his greenhouse, not because he uses much of it, um, but he usually puts it somewhere kind of near the door and it attracts any aphids in the area and they just cover the stuff, right? So um, he doesn't have problems anywhere else in his garden with it, but you know, the, the dill attracts them, it keeps them happy and he doesn't have issues with aphids, right? That's an example of um, insect trapping. So you're still giving, you know, the insects that you maybe don't want around a life because they're, impart they're important in the cycle too. You just don't want them out of control. Um, hey, Jolianne, how are you? Um, but it's, it's a good way to, to keep an eye on what's going on in your yard right? and, and your garden, right? Um, number three is beneficial insect hosting. So attracting beneficial insects into your yard, like um, hoverflies, mason bees, beneficial wasps, etc. There's literally thousands of them out there. So um, I want to focus just for a minute here. Oops, I got company with a neighbor's dog here. Hey, Benny. Um, uh, I want to just focus like on hoverflies here for a minute. If you do like a two minute search on them, you are going to be absolutely mind blown on the benefits of having these around. And I guarantee you, you've seen them in your yard. You either think that they are, you either think that they are wasps or um, flies, depending on the type or just some weird insect. And because we have this thing in our head about wasps and hornets, you know, we probably, run up run away from them spray raid whatever and you really actually want them around um, they're very gentle they are fantastic pollinators they don't get nearly the attention that bees do even though yes of course you want bees around but um, um, attracting hoverflies has just multiple uses because they also um, help eliminate different kinds of pests depending on the type. There's over 600 different kinds of hoverflies, I believe, and they live on every um, continent on the planet except I think Antarctica. They're everywhere and you want these guys around. So what happens is there's different ones that feed, you know, the larvae when they lay their eggs, they feed on dead wood, help break it down, um, maybe composting matter. But the ones that you'll probably see in the garden is when you look in, um, you'll see some eggs laid on the underside of um, leaves and they're going to lay them their eggs so that their larvae have food so they're very attracted to places that have like aphids right because when the larvae hatch these guys in two or three weeks will munch through hundreds and hundreds of aphids if not thousands you want these guys around but then what happens we go look in our greenhouse or garden go oh my gosh i have caterpillars what are they so it's important to know what you're looking at and what the benefits are. And if you start thinking about it like this, um, attracting hoverflies, I mean, not just with pollinating uh, flowers, but also with food for their young, it starts making sense having like your dill, right? Because they can lay their eggs 
um, you can produce more hoverflies for your garden and they have food. It, it's a balance, right? Um, there's other, other um, flowers that you can plant. I've put it in the PDF, like lavender. They, they like lots of different kinds of herbs. Um, and you know, it's just all things that you can interplant throughout your property to attract these things. Now, some kinds of plants um, also repel other, um, repel um, predatory insects that maybe you don't want. Um, just by the fact that they have like a strong odor, they secrete, you know, a certain type of um, sappiness into the soil. So you, you want to be careful with those. Two prime, uh, two really major ones are garlic and uh, marigolds. Um, you know, the scent from them, um, the, the flavor from it can go into the soil and help uh, deter pests. And which is why you see people interplanting a lot with them. It, it's not necessarily a complete solution, but it's one that definitely helps and you can help keep things in balance with it. Um, and the bi biggest thing too is that um, plants just like moral support. Um, you know, there's different names for this, but they're like, they're like us people. We do better with certain kinds of friends around us, you know, maybe people that encourage us and we do well together and we've got similar interests, just like they have, you know, similar soils and watering needs and they do well together. They help each other out. And then there's some that um, don't do so well together. You know, there's certain people that just, it's like, oh my gosh, I can't handle being around them and plants have the same thing. You thought the garden was all peaceful and, and uh, brightness and light, right? There's a lot of drama going on out there. So for example, the easiest way to do this, because when you go online, you're going to find literally lists of all these things that, you know, some plants like, some plants don't, some. So pick the, pick the foods that you want to grow. So for example here, uh, green beans. Okay, any kind of beans are a nitrogen fixer in the soil, which you're always, you know, and it helps benefit, they help benefit other plants. Now, green beans, um, they like to hang out with corn, cucumbers, radishes, potatoes, pretty much anything from the cabbage family. What they don't like is onions, garlic, and beets, right? So they're not friends with those. <laughs> so when you're putting together your stacks of seeds, just put together all the ones that, um, you know, are kind of listed as friends and then kind of put the ones that are separate, you know, maybe put along the two rows side by side for the ones in those groups that do like each other and the rest that don't are further over. And it makes it a lot simpler than trying to sort out through, you know, 500 kinds of seeds and lists. So I hope this helps. Um, companion planting doesn't have to be that hard. And another thing I was going to point out, like with uh, companion planting um, and attracting beneficial insects, um, yes, beneficial insects like pretty much all herbs and those sorts of things, but you, you want to try and have things that have multiple uses. So alyssum is a great one. Um, when you plant your garden and hopefully you mulch, um, maybe use grass clippings and leaves between your rows, you know, help, help keep the soil uh, damp. It, it helps with uh, your watering, um, keeping the soil moist longer and it also helps smother weeds. Um, but if you take and sprinkle like alyssum seeds all over, they don't grow that high, right? And they provide a nice mulch. They self-sow and they attract um, beneficial insects to your garden all season long, right? They're going to attract your hoverflies and your bees and your mason bees. It provides shelter for things like spiders that you want in your garden. Yeah, I know. So I don't like having spiders too close either, but they are really, really good to have in your garden. And this provides shelter for them. And even things like your frogs and toads, um, you know, it helps shelter them from, you know, birds and things that go after them. So, you know, there's easy ways to do this to make your garden look really awesome and you don't actually have to work too hard. Now, I'm not the kind of person that uh, lines everything up row by row too much. I mean, I do have rows, but you know, then I like to just randomly toss in seeds for, you know, like alyssum and um, calendula and, and things that just naturally take over. And so you kind of have to keep an eye on them, but they're easy to pull up. Um, things like calendula are edible, right? Um, and so they attract, once they start blooming, usually early midsummer, they bloom right through till snowfall. Um, I've had them blooming in the first couple snowfalls, um, you know, like uh, usually minus two or three and then they kind of die off. So especially if you have bees and pollinators around, 
they're a really good food source for late in the season. You can um, dry the, the, they're edible. Everything about them is edible. They were often called pot marigolds because you could take and throw them in the pots, kind of in, in soup pots and stuff like poor man's saffron. You can dry them, you can turn them into salves and lotions and potions and skincare items and you know, all kinds of things. They have a lot of uses. So they get to look pretty and they get to do you a lot of good. So it doesn't have to be difficult companion planting. It's just kind of understanding what's gonna benefit you in your garden. So leave me a comment below. Thank you for being here and I will talk to you again soon. Bye for now.